Hello, hello, hello. This is Rebecca and today I wanted to go over a new feature that's available sadly only to folks that have the subscription to Office 365. Uh, this sketchy lines has been rolled out to you know all the different features in uh, Office 365. The beauty of having the subscription to Office 365 is that as soon as an update comes out, it gets rolled out to us. So when you have a standalone copy, unfortunately, you have to wait to buy the new standalone version. So that's why the 365 subscription is really cool because new stuff comes out more and more. And with PowerPoint, it's getting really kind of cool. So I'm going to show you, <clears throat> those of you that are in my low content community, Many of us come from the coloring craze community too. So I'm going to show you how to use these SVGs and create coloring pages all right inside of PowerPoint. So Microsoft came out with sketched shapes. It came out actually in July, but most of us are just really getting in touch with what's going on now. Uh, there's a video, I'll leave a link to this page, but what it does is it takes your icons and it allows you to put sort of more a hand-drawn look. But it also helps, lets us do some other things too. There's, there's so many different things that uh, can be done because you can use the freeform shape to, hand, to do other things too. So um, there's a lot to this update. Uh, if you really want to get crazy. So what I'm going to do today is just do a real simple video, not getting too long, hopefully. <clears throat> and I'm going to use these dog silhouettes. You can use any SVG that you want to. I'm just using these dog silhouettes that I get from Creative Fabrica. Uh, I'm going to use some patterns. Uh, for, you can get them at a place from Color Me Positive PLR, which is my go-to resource for many of the templates that I use for both my low content books as well as for my coloring books. She has all kinds of different things on her website that you can explore. She's got cute little elephants and all kinds of different uh, stuff. So I'm going to be using these pattern backgrounds um, in the inside of the dog shape. So that's just one place where you can get them. And another place to get uh, icons is I use the Noun Project. So that's another great place, as well as technically, if you have Office 365, now if you have a standalone version of Office Home or a student version, technically you're not supposed to use any of the resources inside of these for commercial use. But if you have a 365 version or a professional version of Office, then you can use your insert and you can use the shapes and the icons and all kinds of stuff for your commercial use. So let's just get started. I have downloaded the SVG um, and I also downloaded this cute little, little puppy. And you can see that I broke it apart and added different figures to it to make a really cute coloring page. So let's just quickly go through that. Let's start with this one. I'll just uh, create a new slide. And all I'm going to do is take this SVG. And again, you can get SVGs from all over the place. Uh, Creative Fabrica, Normally when you're downloading an image from a website or an icon, it'll give you the op option to download the PNG or the SVG. The nice thing about the SVG is that if it's like this dog, then it has several different components that are grouped together. And that's what will allow us to have the different uh, shapes in here. Now with this dog right here, it really only has one one shape so there aren't any other parts to it so we'll just start off really simply with this one so all you do is you have the SVG you import it you know you you drag it in whoops drag it in from a file 
uh, any of you who have been using PowerPoint are already familiar with that. You would just take the file and then you would just drag it on here, right? So that's all you do when you're adding a picture. You just drag it in there. Oops, let's get that over there. So I have this in here and now I'm going to click on it. I write and I'm, whoops, you right click or you'll also see this graphics format. So you can do it in two different places. You can right click, make sure you're getting the full menu and it will say convert to shape or you can click up here on the graphics format menu up in your toolbar and you'll click convert to shape. Now I'm on a PC, but it doesn't really matter because on a Mac and a PC, virtually everything is the same. So let's just go back there because I want to make sure that you saw what I did. So I'm going to convert to shape, go to graphics format, go to convert to shape, and you'll get this little warning sign. This is an imported picture, not a group. Do you want to convert it to a Microsoft Office drawing object? And you want to go yes. So now you've turned it actually into an image. So now you see shape format. Now with the shape format, what we're going to do is we're going to go shape outline. And now you should see this little sketched one below where it says line weight. So we're on shape outline, sketched, and you can pick any more of these lines. There's more lines here in your normal drop down. And you'll see your sketchy shape here. So you can do it from here or you can do it from your sidebar. They're both the same exact window. This is just a shortcut, right? So we're going to go to sketched style. I'm just going to pick the squiggly right there. And now you can see it's kind of bumpy on the outside. And then I'm going to go shape fill. And now you can go no fill. And you'll see that it's totally hollow. All right. Now I'm going to turn that line black. Now this is really cool. This is something to think about here because one of the things that I could do with this lines is I can make dotted lines and I just make them bigger like that. And so, so now I've made an object that's traceable and for a little kid that could be kind of cool. I think we can make them really big. And we don't have a ton of different types of dots, um, so I wouldn't get too crazy on that one. But that's just something to think about that you could make for a little kid's tracing uh, kind of page. So we'll go back to the solid line. And now what I want to do is just like I would with any shape, I want to go to fill and I want to go picture. I don't want texture, so I need to insert that. I'll insert from file and I have, um, oops, that's not what I want. Let's see. Do, do, do. And I have my designs. Those are the some designs that I've gotten from Maureen. Obviously, you get a lot more. I think you get 200 in that package. But these are just a couple of them, just so that we can have something to play with. I'll insert the design, and there you go. Now, at first, what I didn't like was that you can't really move that, but I figured out how to do it. So what you're going to do is under shape format, you need to uh, find the cropping tool. So picture format, there we go. Under picture format, we have the cropping tool. And under the cropping tool, I'm going to go to fill. And now I have the 
still in the background. Now you have to be careful because these little brackets right here are actually the the design itself and the little round things is the actual image in the background. So just be careful not to confuse the two things. So now I can move that image around, I can make it bigger, and I can place it a little bit better the way that I want it to. And then you just click off and now it's there. So I've moved it around. So again, you click on the shape, you're gonna go to picture format, not shape format, but picture format. You'll use the crop tool and you're going to select the fill. And then again, these things resize the actual uh, shape itself. And then these little ones, you'll see pretty obviously which ones are for the background. But that just gives you much more control over your background image so that you can place it in a better way. Now I will say one thing that's important since we are on a PC, we always want to go to File and Options and go to Advanced and we always want to make sure to not compress our images and to set them to 300 dpi to make sure that we are preserving the uh, quality of these lines when we turn this into a coloring book so that it's being printed at 300 dpi. Now on a Mac you would go up to your toolbar and under file it says compress images and then you would click on do not compress images. So it's that's one of the only things that's in a different place on a Mac than it is on a PC. So if you're on a Mac, you just need to go up to File and it'll say Compress Images and then you have to select Do Not Compress Images. So that should be a step that you're already doing if you're doing low content books with PowerPoint. So uh, we're getting a little long-winded here. Um, we're already into 12 minutes. So I just want to go to this cute little puppy dog right here. And I'll start a new slide. And this little puppy dog, again, I got it from the Noun Project. And you would basically drag it into your project the same way that you would any image. Now with this one, this has more complex parts than the dog, which was one single image. So when I click on this one, I want the graphics format. Again, I can do it with my drop down menu, convert to shape, or I could do it over here, convert to shape. You'll get that message. You go yes. Now the next step for this complex one is I go to arrange. I'm under shape format because I've turned it into a shape. I go to arrange and I'm going to ungroup it. Now you can see all the different components that exist for this dog. Now this is the cool part. When you have something like this that has multiple different components, we can do something super cool, especially if we're doing a coloring book. So I'll go here. Now I want to actually apply that little kind of hand-drawn effect to the whole thing. So I'm going to go to Shape Format. I'm going to go to Shape Outline, and I want to turn that into that sketched line, OK? And then, now I'm going to go one piece at a time. So I want this piece right here. I'm going to go Shape Fill, and you can see his, his eyes and his nose and his mouth are still there, right? So I only want to fill in this head part right here. So now I'll go to picture and fill. And now it's going to fill it in with a design of, usually it'll fill in the, the last design that you used. And we could just go to insert, go back to our image file and pick a different image if we want it to, right? And then if we don't like that, we'll go back to picture format, go to fill, and again, I now have the, the, the circles are the, make sure you don't pull on these little things right here um, or you'll kind of move it around and mess it up and 
that would make you crazy I think but now we can take this and we can move the design in the background around I can also rotate the design if I want to I'm pretty sure I can let's see I don't see rotate bars but I probably can I just have to figure that out um, but I'm moving it around doing that and now that's the way that I want that on his head now the next component I'm going to do his back legs first just so you can see how cool this is so I'm doing the back legs next and I'm going to go fill I'm going to go insert we're going to get a different design now that looks kind of weird and squishy so I'm going to go back to picture format go back to crop go to fill so that I actually can stretch this out so it uh, has a better aspect ratio inside of his legs. But now you see his legs are in front. So now I need to go up to picture format and I'm going to send them to the back. And now you'll see because his legs go behind him, right? Now I'm going to do the front legs do the same thing go to format picture fill I want a different image now this is one reason why most people don't do a lot of coloring books because it is indeed labor-intensive uh, but that's also why we get to do cool stuff uh, those of us who are doing coloring books because most people that are doing low content books that are just stuck in the uh, one uh, kind of book composition notebooks are not going to want to spend the time to make these kinds of complex coloring books so uh, this is where we shine all right so now you have this really cool book with this cool teddy bear or doggy with all these different designs now you can go a step further and you can format the background and get super crazy <laughs> and uh, add to that now I want to let's see uh, I want to it looks like this design let me go back to a solid fill all right I need to figure out how to turn this white because there should actually be I may have to play with that. Nope, I don't want that. I may have to play with that because his eyes are separate and his mouth is separate. So actually this little piece right here should actually be separate. So let's do this. I'm going to do something here that's a little bit of a trick. I don't want that background design to go into his mouth right here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shape from up here and I'm going to go like this and I'll make sure the shape fits inside of his head like that and this is where edit shape I can edit the points of my shape so I'm going to pull it so that it covers his ears too because those seem to be transparent go like that so you see there's little points that are here you'll see these little points so I've gone to edit shape and I'm editing the points of the shape and I'm going to turn that white of course I want to make sure the line isn't there and now I'm going to send that backwards there so now it's white so now if I apply the background format background now when I apply this background boom it's not showing through here all right adjust that just a little bit there we go 
So now I have a really cool coloring page uh, and I can do, do all kinds of things with this. Um, so it's really crazy. But I think for a kid, if you had, a, these are fairly easy to color, this would be super entertaining. And again, this is just training to give you ideas of what you can do with this new feature and the kinds of things that you can create. So go out, have fun. Uh, if you're not in my Journal Tsunami group yet, I hope you'll come and join us because we're uh, one of my members showed me how to do this and then I just went off and took it to the next level and we're always sharing all ideas in the group like this. So hopefully you'll come and join us. Uh, talk to you later. Have fun um, and go out and be creative. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.